Howdy guys. So in this video we're going to continue where we left off with our barrel HDA. In particular we're going to be looking at uh, working with HDAs and um, how to save them and open them in new hit files as well as continue adding more stuff to our HDA. So we're going to be adding the barrel hoops or the rings that go around the barrel. Uh, so with that um, let's talk about uh, saving HDAs. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, if we go look at our type properties, the HDA is a separate file that exists independently of the HIP file. So in my case, this barrel HDA is saved to my class drive on my computer as a .hda file. Uh, this, I could access this library of HDAs in any uh, HIP file that I opened through Houdini. Uh, so we'll actually see that if I right click my node and go to save node type it will save my current operator node and I can hit tab up in my object level and go down to my digital assets tab and add a new barrel node. I'll go ahead and turn this one off and here we have my new barrel. Uh, and it will come in with the default parameters that we have set previously. Uh, and we'll notice that uh, if we compare these two, this one has a lock symbol and this one has uh, a lock symbol that is locked. Uh, so when we right click this one, uh, we'll have to say allow editing of contents in order to make changes to this HDA. Uh, and we'll show you if I dive down, our screen's actually grayed out. So we'll be able to see our HDA and the node's contents that are involved, but we will not be able to make any changes to it until we right click and allow editing of contents and now everything will be the normal saturation and we'll be able to edit as we did before. So uh, another way that we can go about um, organizing our HDAs is if I go back to the type properties menu. Let's go ahead and jump over to the tools tab and we'll go down into context and then we'll look at this tab submenu path. Uh, this submenu path by default, as we see if we hit tab over here, will show digital assets and barrel. What we can do is we can actually change this to let's say uh, vist284 and I'll hit apply. Now if I hit tab, vist284 and our barrel will appear right there. So a really useful way to organize HDAs, especially when working in large projects with lots of HDAs or files that are shared between people, is to organize them into submenu appropriate submenu paths. So we could do um, digital assets vis284 and hit apply. And now we'll go to digital asset vis284 barrel. So in this way, if we had multiple projects with specific HDAs referencing in each project, we would be able to access them and organize them in a better manner. Uh, we'll go ahead and just leave this as vis284 for now. And while we're in here, I didn't like how short and stubby the barrel was when it came in, so I'm going to change its default height to 3, and that will make it look a bit better. Yeah, because I think that's what it's at right now, the last time I messed with it. All right. So, now that we've looked at that, I'll go ahead and save the node type, and then we'll dive back down into our HDA, and we'll look at adding the barrel hoops. So. Uh, to get started with our barrel hoops, I'm going to go down here and make an add node. And we could do this operation with a curve, um, but I tend to like working with add nodes because I feel like they give me uh, more strict control. So that's what we're going to be working with. And we're going to want to add two points. Um, what we're going to be doing here is creating a curve and then resampling the points along that curve. Um, and then we're going to group them at each height along the barrel so that we can uh, instantiate or copy our rings to our barrel according to the barrel's height. So uh, let's add these two points. Uh, let's make this one just like a little bit below the bottom. Let's turn on points to make this easier. And point numbers, so we'll see zero is just a little bit up right there. And our height here, we're actually going to want to make this just below the top. So we'll do B box and then grab our barrel body 
again. And then we'll do D Y max. And then we'll see that it is just at the top and we're going to go ahead and subtract it by the same offset that we did up there. So it's just under the edge ring right there. That looks good. And now that we got that, let's go ahead and uh, go to polygons. We're going to group this by all points so that we get a nice line right there. Let's go ahead and hide this so we can see our line better. And once we have that, we're going to want to add a resample node to add some points to our curve. And we're going to want to do this based off of maximum segments because we're going to need exactly six. And I'll show you why here in a second. So what we'll have is our top rings, bottom ring, our quarter hoops right here. And we'll use these for our build hoops. And we'll actually be removing this middle point here because we won't need it. But I like creating six because then it will evenly distribute them across the height of our barrel. So let's go ahead and work on creating our group. So there's actually a couple of different ways that we could group up our points. So we're going to go over uh, three different ways right now because we have three different uh, point groups to select. So first off, we're going to make a group by range. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this um, head points. And we'll go in here. And we're going to select points and go ahead and call this head points and we're going to start our range at zero and we're going to select one point for every um, number up to the begin zero first one and the last one. So we want to select the first one but we also want to select the last one. So what we can do is type in points and then do dot dot slash to go up and start typing resample because that's our curve line right here at the top. End. And this will return, we shrink this down, 7, which is the number of points that we have in our curve. Um, what we actually want is 1 minus this number. And then now, regardless of how many points that we add to our line, it will always select the first and last point. So, um, that's our head points group. For the next one, we're going to do a, another group by range. And for this one, uh, we're just going to change this to points. Uh, and we're going to select one of, and we want one and five here. So for here, we're just going to set this number to five. So it will select up to the fifth one. So right now we're starting at zero and ending at fifth one. So we can do this one of two ways. We can either choose to start, move our start up, but then subtract this down to four, and that will get us that, um, because it's gonna count up that number of points from that point. Or we can offset this by one, and move this down, and grab one, and then up four to five. So, uh, we'll call this the quarter heads, or I guess quarter points, quarter points. And now we're going to go over a third way, um, which is to simply use a normal group node. And we're just going to group by points. We'll call this the bilge points. Bilge points. And then we're simply going to select points two and four. And there we go. We've got our three groups. 
Alright, so now that we have our three groups, we're going to go ahead and start making our uh, barrel hoops. So I'm just going to start making another tube. Uh, I'm just going to call this the hoop. And we'll template our line and view our hoop. Let's make this a polygon. Uh, we don't need end caps. Our radius scale, um, probably going to eventually want this to be a little bit bigger than our actual barrel. Um, our height we can always change later. Let's just go ahead and make it something like point like that. And our columns, um, just like we have everything else, we're going to want that to be the same value as our original stave base. So we'll just go ahead and copy that parameter and we'll paste it over here All right. then uh, we can go ahead and make a copy to points function and copy to points node and we'll just drag this down here and we'll see that it copies our hoop to the points that we had on our input curve and our second input and what we actually want to do is change this right now so that we copy only to our bilge uh, so this will be if we template our barrel the center hoops right here um, and we might want to add a transform node Over here and move this to our bilge points so that we have a way to control the scale here um, and it looks like we're going to want to move the pivot of this so that as we change this scale it doesn't go down we want them to scale in so let's go ahead and move the pivot to the center between the two right there so we can do that pretty easily by just doing dollar c e y and now when we change this scale, they'll scale in more towards the center. So now we have easy control to see how in our thing we want. Uh, let's do 0.85 for now. That'll be fine. All right. And so now that we have our copy there, we can go ahead and work on the next tube. And then we'll, after that, we'll work on uh, shrinking these all to our barrel. Real quick, let's do this again for our quarter. Um, we'll go ahead and copy these guys, paste them over here. Maybe our quarter hoop should be a little bit taller or shorter, probably smaller. These are going to be at the top. Yeah, that's like that thin band that goes up right there. So it's going to be, let's go ahead and name this Build Choop. I'll name this Quarter Hoop. All right. Let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit. And we're going to want to change this from our build hoop to our quarter points. And notice that when we add this, it retains the previous group as before. So we'll just delete our previous group. And then we've got that. And copy these and paste this again. And this time we're going to want to set this. Uh, let's clean this up just a bit. Let's do that. That looks cleaner. So this time we're going to want to set this to our um, head points. We'll shrink this. Alright, and actually these transforms I believe are all set to bilge points still. So let's go ahead and set those back to head points. And we'll move this transform to quarter points. Okay. And we'll 
go ahead and merge all these together. We've got our uh, sets of rings. And now that we've got that, um, let's go ahead and select these guys and move them up over here to make this a little bit easier to manage. We're just going to take our um, merge over here and add a ray and then the second input from our barrel body. And what this will do is we want to ray cast the edge of our rings to the surface of our barrel uh, in a kind of like shrink wrap fashion. So uh, going into our ray we're going to make sure this is set to primitives and we're going to go to minimum distance and we'll see that that has shrunk our uh, rings to the surface of our barrel body. Um, and if we want we could lift this out just a little bit uh, probably like that just to get uh, a little bit off of that surface and then go ahead and add some thickness to the hoops uh, we can do that with a poly extrude I'll just extrude out a little bit we don't really need back faces on this so we can go ahead and leave output back unchecked because uh, we'll never see them on the inside of our rings all right and that's our rings so we can go ahead and merge these in um, and we'll merge that into uh, actually we'll just go ahead and merge this guy into there let's just go ahead and fix up this merge order from left to right And now we have a barrel with our rings. So uh, what I would like, and let's go back up to the top here. Um, so as my barrel height shrinks and gets taller, our rings kind of collapse on themselves. It doesn't look all that great. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, function to our barrel HDA so that the rings will disappear and or resize themselves according to the barrel height so that we don't have uh, this uh, crunching of rings happening. So let's go back into our rings and move these guys out just a little bit to give us some extra working room. And we're going to go ahead and add some switches in here and write some simple expressions to help us uh, see when to automatically hide or to add our rings to our barrel. So what we're going to do is pretty easy. We're just going to check to see if our barrel is at a certain height um, and if it is at that height to add our bill hoops and then if it is at a, another height to add our quarter hoops and we're always going to want to add our heads so we won't have to worry about that one so now that we've got that um, let's go ahead and add a switch node and then we're gonna need a null node off of this switch so uh, we're gonna go into our switch and we're gonna type a simple if expression so we'll say if our channel and dot dot slash dot dot slash we'll say height just to grab the height parameter that we have defined in our HDA. I'm going to say if our height parameter is less than 2.3 then we're going to want to display our rings else we'll hide them. Alright and now we're already at the bottom down there so if we go back up to our barrel and check out what we have going on over here. And we'll say move our height down and we'll see those rings will disappear as they would become start to become overcrowded. So we're going to do the same thing with our uh, quarter up here. Go ahead and uh, split
split this uh, view to make that easier to see and we'll pin that and let's go ahead and just copy this right here and we'll call this switch hide bilge rings and we'll call this one hide quarter rings. So on this switch we're probably going to want a value of less than let's say three. Yeah it looks like it's getting a little too crowded less than three. So let's just say if it's less than three. There we go. So now as our barrel gets taller we'll add our more rings and as it gets smaller the rings will disappear. Alright, um, so we can go ahead and uh, shrink this guy into its own subnet and we'll just call this um, rings to make our tree a little bit cleaner over here. Let's keep that merge from running away. Alright, and we'll go back into here and just see how this is doing. Just grab this input and move it over here to make that a little bit cleaner. Move these guys out of the way. Alright, and there's our ring subnet. And our barrel's looking pretty good. So I think that we can probably we're probably about done. Eventually we're going to need to add some UVs. We can do that in a later video. So for now, uh, let's go ahead and add some noise uh, to the top and bottom of the uh, ends of the staves on our barrel because this is supposed to be a wooden barrel and uh, very rarely do you see the uh, um, staves be so uh, clean cut like they are. So adding some noise will be pretty easy. Uh, really, all we're going to need to do is, let's go ahead and do this after our bunk hole has been added. And we're going to want to group the upward, these top points right here on our staves. And that's the noise. Well, we could do this um, individually up here, um, one stave at a time. Uh, but I think it'd be easier just to grab the top points and add some noise. So we're going to make a group. And in this group, uh, we're going to go ahead and call this top points. And in our top points, we're just going to call this top top points group we're going to be looking for points and we're going to want to grab by a bounding box region. So uh, we'll go ahead and just grab the bounding box of our barrel body and we'll just do bbox uh, barrel body and then we'll do d underscore x size and what that'll do is make it the entire uh, maximum size, both in the positive and negative x directions of our barrel body. Uh, so now that we've got that in the x direction, we can go ahead and just copy this function over here and change this value to z. All right. And we're going to want to make this a little bit shorter, to so 0.1, so that we can just make sure that we get exactly one row. And we're going to want to make this uh, go up to the uh, dy max of our barrel body. So we'll just copy this again and then change this to y max. And now we've got all of our top points on our barrel. So. Uh, we're going to do something quite similar, so we can probably just copy this group over here. And for this one, it's going to be 
bottom points. Uh, group, since our D size, uh, our sizes are going to be the same. Really, here we just need Y min. And now we've got the bottom points on our barrel body. So now that we've got our points grouped, uh, we'll go ahead and add a mountain sop to add some noise to our barrel. So uh, yep, that's a lot of noise. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, change our groups to our bottom points and our top points and clean up some of this uh, noise is a little much. So this noise is, uh, let's go ahead and increase the element size to make that noise a little more controlled. Uh, let's say about 5.5 five. and then we'll decrease this height a little bit because um, we want them to be just a little not perfect. That, that looks that looks all right. Uh, how are we looking at the bottom over here? It looks like we're getting some pinching. A little less. All right. There. Yeah, that looks all right. And we're going to go ahead and increase the roughness a little bit just to make that more jagged. And that's looking pretty good. All right. Cool. And now we got some noise for the uh, staves on our barrel. And we'll just go down to our output there. And now we can control the height, the number of our staves, the barrel bow amount. We've got the ability to toggle our top on and off. We can display or hide our bunk hole and our parameters hide. Increase or decrease this size and then move the bunk hole around on our barrel. And yeah, I think that about covers uh, adding a basic uh, barrel HDA in Houdini. Um, in uh, the next iteration of this asset, we're going to go ahead and look at cleaning it up some and adding some UV information.